for us, a teaching Bataka method, it's very important for me to remind people of their posture on a daily basis. <music> With all the workshops you've given, I, I dare say you have a keen eye for people's posture and the way they breathe and can explain the relationship between the two? Sure. And this will be fairly consistent with what most people already know but may not pay much attention to. And that is that the human body is designed to be efficient in a long, open, upright posture. Therefore, the best position for engaging in the most optimal breathing is to be long and wide and soft and relaxed. This is not really a surprise to most people. However, they may not realize what an important role it plays in how they can breathe. The point of being long is to have the spine in its natural upright position and humans were designed to be most efficient in an upright position. That's the way we walk, that's the way we sit. When the spine is long, it has two curves. It has a curve at the back of the neck and it has a curve, I'll stand up, above the hips. And so maintaining those curves, as you would see if you saw the skeleton, hanging in the doctor's office, you would notice those curves. And if the body's in that position, the major organs are all now in a place where they can function without pressure. And that's the way we're designed. Also, something I've learned over the years of teaching Bateko is having an open rib cage is very important. Unfortunately, modern life draws Firstly, our head forward, because we use a lot of digital technology and look at things close up. So that already messes up the posture because we lose the curve in the back of our neck and it draws the shoulders slightly forward and then closes the rib cage. And in order for breathing to be optimal, actually the rib cage needs to be always open, not necessarily pulled open, but with soft shoulders, held open by an effective upright posture. When the rib cage is open, the lungs have a residual gas. A lot of people don't realize that our lungs were never meant to be empty. <laughs> so we never try to empty our lungs. The lungs are meant to be inflated. And breathing, especially at rest, is a very small business that doesn't actually move the rib cage at all. The diaphragm moves down and then the belly will come out a little bit because the diaphragm has moved down to accommodate a little extra air. And when we breathe out, the diaphragm will move up and the belly will come back in. And this is what natural breathing looks like. And if anyone has seen a healthy baby if they happen to be lying down even, you will see that their ribs don't move and their belly moves and it doesn't move very much. And actually this is the case for adults. If we're healthy and breathing optimally, the chest simply doesn't move at all. And there's a slight movement of the belly as we breathe in, it comes out. As we breathe out, it comes back in. We should relax our belly so that the diaphragm, which connects to the rib cage, un under the rib cage, it's connected all the way around to the back. If that area of the body is tense, then the diaphragm, which is our most important breathing muscle, will be also tense and constricted. So we emphasize in teaching Bateko method that relaxing the diaphragm is of, of critical importance in terms of effectively managing the breath. Now the posture in which we hold ourselves is quite critical to this happening effectively. There's a, another technique called the Alexander technique which talks about how we hold ourselves. 
And I find it to be very consistent knowing about the Alexander technique and practicing it before I really started teaching Boteco. Uh, I discovered that they're in a similar genre because they're about the way we use our body. Boteco breathing is about how we use our breathing to be more effective and have a more optimal breathing pattern. And Alexander Technique talks about how to hold the body so that it's most efficient and most relaxed. They combine perfectly. And the Alexander Technique talks of the sitting bones. So if we sit, and we usually advise people to sit on the front of the chair when they're practicing their breathing practice, so that they almost get the posture of somebody in a perfect um, lotus position. They can have their legs apart, their sitting bones on the front of the chair, so that most of the weight of the body is on the sitting bones and the feet are simply maintaining a little balance. And, the, and the, we can imagine there's a string from the tailbone here going through the crown of the head. So it doesn't lift the front of the head. The front of the head should never be lifted actually except when you have to raise it to look at something very high. Otherwise, we raise our eyes. But the front of the head stays slightly tucked under. But the crown of the head is drawn in a long manner so that the spine is open. And this allows us then to relax our shoulders, to let them soften, but soften in an open position, not fall forward, which would then close our rib cage. This postural distinction is what allows for effective and optimal breathing. So it's completely consistent with Dr. Bottega's discovery and the teaching. Now, fortunately, the method, Bottega's method, allows one to become more conscious of posture because one discovers that when one sits in the posture described, that one has better control of the breathing. 